Hi, my name's Jerry. I'm a twin troller boat owner, and I also own this Honda outboard, 2.3 horsepower. It's mounted on the back of my transom, and I am going to today do a full service on this motor, as well as on the trailer that supports my twin troller X10. So stay with me. I've got some tips to show you and some ways to get a lot of this done much easier than we have in the past. Come on along. Okay, here's tip number one. Wear some old clothes, you're gonna get dirty. And if you've ever seen something like this, it's the roasting pan out of an oven. When you buy a new oven, they usually come with one of these. These work great in that. And let me explain why. You also need a 13 gallon tall garbage bag. And you're gonna put this inside here and I'll explain why. This will make your life much easier. Okay, this is the tongue to my trailer. When I am towing it, I lock the ball with this. When I come back from fishing, I wanna make sure I still have a trailer left. If you don't lock that ball, it's easy to steal. This is the ball mechanism. And I lubricate this ball once a year. Let me show you all the dirt and everything that's get under here. I'm cleaning it off best I can. And then I take this called Reese lubricant for your ball. It's a Teflon material made specifically for the ball of the trailer. It's kind of cream colored. Take some of this. I rub it all the way around the inside so that when the ball sits on here, it's not rusted under there and then not making a good contact because part of your ground actually goes through the frame. And this helps Reese. So this is done. I close back up and I keep that in my tow vehicle so that I don't forget it. This is my tongue jack. I use this to lift it so that I can roll this across, get it onto the ball of the trailer. As you can see how filthy it gets because this I grease also. I don't want to grease it with like wheel bearing grease or something that's really filthy because it could get all over me. And that's it. And I use the same grease as I use on the ball. These are bearing buddies. We're gonna grease the bearings that are inside the axle. You have to do it on both sides. This is filthy. So <clears throat> make sure you have a lot of paper towels. This is my grease gun. I haven't used it in a while. You can see that grease is sticking out of the end. It oozes out of this gun when it's not being used. So I clean off or that little bit of grease would have captured dirt over time and I don't wanna push that into here. I'm gonna put this underneath this and pull the cap off. That's why I did that underneath here because this is submerged. It sometimes gets water in there and the water will mix with the grease that's in there and cause a mess like you see there. I'm gonna clean this cap as best I can. And I'm gonna clean the front of this, the bearing buddy. The way how this particular bearing buddy goes, see this blue ring that pushes out when uh, it's still full of grease. It's not pushed all the way here, but it is pushed all the way out here. So it just needs a tiny bit more. I could probably get away with not doing any. Push it on. Now, if you watch the blue ring, see it's starting to come out. There you go, that's enough. Clean this off, I clean this off put my, it's called the Bearing Buddy Bra, and I'll put this back on. Make sure it's seated all the way. It's got air now bound on the inside, so you kind of have to push it all the way in and get all the air out, because you don't want this to fall off when it's driving down the road. All right, that's all the way in. Occasionally I check my air tire pressure, and I'm gonna do the other side. I've already shown you this. There's no sense of wasting your time. It's identical on the other side. Now I do occasionally take a little damp paper towel Wipe off all my trailer light surfaces. And I have side marker lights. I just clean them off just to make sure that people can see them. This is a small boat. I don't want anybody running into me. Simple thing to do, but could be important. And I naturally do that on the other side also. Okay, here's the Honda. While I have the grease gun out, I'm going to grease this one grease fitting that's on the side of the motor here. That greases so that when this turn, it, it gets the shaft cover grease. Now I might be in the way of the camera, but. Below this video, click on show more 
to see links for many of the items used in most of my videos. They are there so you can locate them in case you are interested. And you can see grease coming out from here. All right. Pretty much all I need. And you need that bin on the bottom to catch that because it makes a mess. What's one of the most important things that you need for working on this? That's the manual. It gives you all your specifications on the motor. I printed this so that I try to keep this from getting all dirty. It gives me a lot of my specs. In addition to that, what do you need to do a service on? Well, you need lubricant, some kind of grease. You saw what we used in the grease gun, but there are other kinds of greases. The manual actually calls for a grease like this. It is a marine grease made for a waterproof, anti-corrosion, excellent lubricant, it's made for boat motors. And there are many parts inside here that move and you need to lubricate them. I do use this, however, this is black like regular greases. It gets all over everything. Where I can use it, I am going to use this. It's called Super Lube. It is a synthetic grease. It is extremely lubricant, does not rub off, and is waterproof. In addition to that, you could eat this. This is a food grade lubricant. I used to use this in a business that I had. And it's clear, so it doesn't get all over everything. Let's open this up. You pull this. Lift this up, this comes out. The motor cowl will not become detached unless you take the pull off of it. I don't want to do that so that I don't have that in my way. I pull it out, I do an overhand knot. Now it will only retract so far and I've got room to not have this hanging on to me all the time. What's a couple of things we're going to do? Well, we're going to change the spark plug. We're going to put a new plug and gap it and put it in. And we're going to lubricate several locations on here. And then we're going to lubricate down here where this pivots right here. And we're going to pull the propeller off to check to see if there's anything underneath there. I just did that the other day. You saw it in another video, but I'll do it again just to show you. We're going to change the lower end gear case lube. Now this Honda motor is air cooled. What does that mean? It means that it doesn't have a pump down here that pumps water up in through the motor and then spits it out like you would see many larger motors do. Well, what's the difference between this one and that with what we're going to do? Virtually nothing. However, if you do have a water pump, it's actually below the water line here. And this happens to be one that I have from a large motor that I had. And this is the water pump. There's the shaft that comes down out of the motor, spins this impeller. <laughs> well, it's a bit hard to get out of here. This is rubber feed all the way around. It spins it and it forces the water up through a tube and then up to the motor again. Well, we don't have to do that. It's not difficult to do that, but we're not gonna do that in this annual servicing of this motor because we don't have one. If you have one, everything else applies the same way, but you need to do this. And naturally yours would be smaller. Now this Honda is a four stroke engine. It means that it goes up and down four times before the spark plug fires and creates a combustion and pushes the piston down. It does that to make the valves. It has intake and exhaust valves in it. One stroke will push the exhaust out. The other stroke will bring fresh fuel in. The other one's a compression stroke. It's the way how it works. Two cycle engines work a whole different way. The difference is this will have a crankcase in the bottom here, very much like your automobile motor has. And it has a puddle of oil in the bottom of the motor to lubricate it. Two cycle engines, you put oil in the gasoline and then that lubricates the motor as the fuel is pulled throughout the, the motor. This doesn't do that. So that means that we occasionally, just like your car, you have to change the oil in the crankcase. And in the past, it's been very messy. I'm gonna do this a whole different way and you're gonna see that in a little bit. But first we're gonna lube all of the moving parts inside here. This is the arm that the throttle works with. Manual says, to remove this and to lube clean and then lube underneath here. So we're gonna do that. I have a rag. All right, the arm is off and I don't wanna mix up all these parts here. I'm gonna clean this surface off and then underneath here is a filthy washer. And then there is this cup shaped thing that keeps it centered. Now that's plastic, but that's gonna go in next. Now there are two of these and this one has a certain size hole. The back side of this and this side of the arm has a bolt. So this pushes out, it's got a washer. I'll set that here. And it has one of those plastic collars. I'm going to clean this, but I want to show you something so you don't get these mixed up. 
This bolt has this big wide shoulder on it and that fits over here. This one is a different size. So this one goes on the motor side, this one comes out here. So I'm gonna pull all this out, clean it. That goes in first. You can see all the dirt that's here. Part of that is why I don't like using the regular grease because it's really filthy and it's dark colored and it looks nasty. I'm gonna use this, the super lube. I'm going to take a little dab, run it on the inside here, all the way around here, and I'm putting it on the outside surface because that's what is gonna be rubbed on as this go ba goes back and forth. I set that back in and I'm lubricating the back side of this washer and I'm gonna put it in. I'm gonna lubricate the flat side of the washer because it's moving against that surface. This side, it doesn't move. So I'm gonna put this in and it's all the way in. See the way how that's the side that moves? And this is what it moves against with this washer. Lubricating the washer, putting it here. Now this would have been a heck of a mess if I was using the other kind. Now, see this here? This goes on the other side, this cable. And now I'm gonna get it started. Okay, now you have to have this on the upside because there's a little stopper here. Now if I put this on the other side, when it went like this, this would be binding here. So this stays on the bottom side of the arm. I made it snug, but I'm not going crazy. By the way, that's a 12 millimeter socket that goes on this. And see how everything's clean? Yet it's all lubed, that's the first thing. Page 46 of the manual right here shows all the lubrication points. One was the swivel of the case. That's that grease fitting we did down here. We did that earlier. Here is the steering handle. I just did that. The throttle arm choke arm, I'll show you how to do that. The steering friction bolt, that's over here, I'll show you that. Uh, the clamp screws, the tilt lever, which is right here, and the throttle arm. Now it says to lubricate this every 50 hours of operating hours or every six months. I generally do this once a year. All right, I'm gonna pull the gas tank off to get underneath here because there are lubrication points underneath there. This is a 10 millimeter bolt and there are two of them. One here, one here. Okay, washer and a nut. Washer and a nut. Now the fuel tank comes loose. Now the fuel tank has the downspout that comes out here. I'm not gonna take that off. I'm just gonna set the tank over to the side so that I can get in here to lubricate a location here. I have it resting on the transom. Okay, when you activate the throttle, this joint here moves. The cable goes back and forth. There's actually, there's a spring here and there's a cable in here. They want you to lubricate in here. Let me clean all this off, all the dirt. And this is in the cowl. The only time it's really out is on the water where it is a fairly clean environment as far as any dirt. And the cowl is over the top, but clearly it gets some dirt in there. Now you could use a Q-tip or something like that, or you can use a rag like this. Take a screwdriver, smaller blade, push it in, Get to in all the places where it needs to be cleaned. All right, that's not bad. Actually have a Q-tip here, a little bit of this on here. Okay, the next place we're gonna lube is the, the choke knob. This is, uh, it's just plastic and it rides back and forth in a little square plastic hole and they want you to lubricate. So Q-tip. And I'm gonna work it back and forth a few times. I'm actually gonna put some on this side. So when I work it, it will get that entire area. There it goes. I'm wipe off any excess that I have. That's done. Okay, we can put the gas tank back on. I've had it leaning on the edge of the, the transom. And I'm gonna put just a little bit of lube around these posts. They seem to stick a little bit when it's trying to go in and out. Just rub it around with my fingers and I'll wipe off the excess. I don't wanna put too much. These two alignment pins have to go in these two spots and the fuel hose goes on the outside. Make sure it's in those holes and it goes over the two 
bolts that are sticking up and tighten them. And I want to strip them. Okay, run it back in. Put them to the low firm and then just snug them just a little bit more. Remember, this is mostly plastic things that you're doing it or small metal components that could easily break. This is called the steering friction bolt. I'm gonna take it all the way out, clean off the surface and everything around it. And there's a spring. You can see all the grease that's on there from last time. I am going to again use the super lube. I'm just getting it in the uh, threads, put the spring back on. Let me show you what this does. This puts tension on the shaft so that this does not turn as easily. So if I tighten this up a little, it's hard to turn. If I loosen it up, it's very easy to turn. Well, this makes me nervous because this could easily come all the way out, just vibrate out, just like you saw me take it out and plop into the water and it's gone. Six years, I haven't lost it yet, but it does seem to make me a little nervous. Sometimes when I'm out on the water, I have to decide whether or not I want this tighter or looser. Right about there seems good. All right, this isn't probably the easiest thing to see. However, the clamp that holds the motor to the transom has these big long bolts to it. Let me loosen them all the way out. Those bolts we lubricated in the past, so you can see the dark grease on them. I think I got most of the grease off. It's in an area that I sometimes put my hand. I don't really want to get them all greased like that with black grease. I'm probably right in your way. I'm just taking this swab and putting some on the threads. Not a big amount, but, and I put it closer to the part of the thread that goes through. I'm gonna put this and center it where the motor should be, and I'm gonna run this bolt in. Now that is drawing some of this grease into the threads that are farther in, and I'll do the other one too. Now once you get done threading this all the way in, it leaves a pretty good amount of grease left behind that gets pushed back out of the threads. I'm gonna take this, clean off both of those clamp bolts, wipe everything off, and that's done, and they're tight. I often stand back to look to make sure that I have the motor centered on this metal plate. I don't want the motor to be off-centered because then it kind of tends to drive itself to one side or the other. Now, hopefully you can see this is the little lever that you flip when you want the motor to come back to the down position like you're gonna drive it. I just flipped the motor up so that we can do that one, but see this little lever? It goes up and down. All it is is a little piece of metal that gets wedged against the little spot here in the back and that stops the motor from going down. You lift it up and then it will go all the way down. So let me clean it all off. The only moving part here really is here. That's spring loaded. I take the Q-tip again and I'm trying to go around this in such a way that when I work it back and forth it will get up underneath there for a second and lubricate it and then wipe off the excess. 